In this third video, I'll show you a few new question types using demographics as an example. These question types include single answer, open-ended text box with numeric validation, and multiple answer. I'll also discuss some issues around forced response with each question type. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a new block, and we're going to program a question for gender, age, and for Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander status. These questions all need to be asked and answered in different ways to each other, which will allow me to show you a few different question types and some considerations around them as well. To start a new block, just click Add Block. Nice and easy. Now, remember we want to rename our blocks. That will make life really easy for you later on when we're dealing with survey flow. So I'll call this one Demographics. Now, you can have more than one block covering demographics. So let's say you want to ask some questions really early on in the survey, like age, to make sure that you've got people who are 18 years or older in there, but you want to ask other things like marital status later in the survey, that's absolutely fine. You don't have to have all demographics questions in the same block. These are just units that help you organize your survey. For now though, in this particular survey, the only questions around demographics I have will be in this block, so I need to add them. If I click on create new question, when I'm in this block, all of a sudden I've got a new question to work with, and this is about gender. So our question is, what is your gender? And we'll say, please select one, because it's nice to tell people how to respond to the question. All right, now we can see that Qualtrics has tried to get a bit smart here and given us two response options, male or female. And you know, for many surveys, many years ago, that would have made sense. But these days we have to take into account other genders as well. And we recognize that this may be uh, a sensitive question for people too. So we're gonna add two options here. One that allows them to say something other than male or female, and one that allows them to opt out of answering the question. Now, the reason we're gonna do that is because we still wanna make sure that they've seen this question and had an opportunity to answer it. We don't want to not have forced response here because then I can't tell the difference between a question that they've chosen not to answer versus a question that they've just missed. So it's usually best to have forced response on for every single question. And you'll see this little asterisk appears over here to show you that forced response is on. Really easy visual check to make sure that forced response is on your, all your questions. And I'll need to add a new option here. So I can just click on female and hit enter and there's my new option, my third option to write in there. And so I'll add in a gender other than male or female. And of course, there could be many other options here for gender too, uh, but we'll use this one and uh, for this particular survey. Now, I'll also give them a prefer not to say option, and that allows them to answer male or female, a gender other than male or female, and to opt out of answering that question if they prefer to, but they still have to answer the question to move on. They can just answer it by saying, I don't want you to know that information. So we've set up our response options here. I'll just make sure that I remember to rename my variable because again, it'll make it really easy when it comes to analysis. Um, but one thing I wanna do here is also to think about how I'm gonna code these values. So for participants taking the survey, all they're gonna see is male, female, a gender other than male or female, and prefer not to say. But I might want to change what the values are, what numbers are assigned to these things. And I can do that by clicking on this gear icon here and going to recode values. So while I'm in here, I'll just click these boxes at the top and I can see that male is coded as one, female is coded as two, gender other than male and female is coded as three, and prefer not to say is coded as four. Now, prefer not to say is kind of a missing answer response, and often we might code these as something like 99. So I can do that here. When I download my data, people will have values 1, 2, 3, and 99. I might prefer to have females coded as 0, males coded as 1, and a gender other than male and female coded as 2. That's fine. You can do whatever coding here you like. But this is where you can change it so that your data is set up how you want them, ready to go. By default, Qualtrics will start at 1 and move on. Sometimes you'll find that if you've tried setting up a question and deleted a whole a bunch of options, that these numbers may not be in numerical order, one, two, three, and so on. You really need to check what values come out if you've played around with a question quite a bit. So that's my gender question set up. I've given people an option to say prefer not to say, but I'm still requiring them to answer the question to move on in the survey. That's gonna help you with analysis later on. I've also recoded values for this question to make life easier for me in analysis later. 
Now I need to add my age question. So if I click this plus button to add the age question, and I'll just say, what is your current age? Um, please enter numerals only. And we're going to have to do some setting up here. Now, remember, rename my question age, and I could have this as a single answer question, select your age from a list. But that list is probably going to have to be quite long, you know, between zero and 100, and no one wants to have to scroll through a big long list like that. So instead, what we usually do for age is we allow people to type in their age. This is a different type of question. So now we're going to show you how to change question types over here. And you'll see that there's actually a lot of different question types in Qualtrics, and I'd highly recommend that you play around with them because some of them make the surveys quite fun, quite interactive. Uh, descriptive text is what we saw for the intro above, the information sheet. We can have a text that's just an, a question that's just an image, and you can upload images into Qualtrics. We can have multiple choice questions, which is what we've seen so far. And there's a little arrow here. You can actually see there's a lot of different types of multiple choice questions. They could even include images as answers. So if you didn't want to use male and female, the words for gender, for example, you could use gender symbols for male and female and non-binary, um, you know, in there instead. If you wanted your survey to be a little bit more fun. You can also have multiple answers in there too. And we're going to use that for the ATSI status later on. Now for this particular one, we're going to use text entry, but before I select it, I'll just show you there's a few other types here that you can play around with, ranking things. Side-by-side -side question can be really useful if you want to capture two things at once. Uh, constant sum, again, is something that we use, like what percentage of your gambling is done in venues online or over the telephone, and they have to add up to 100%. We can use a constant sum question. Um, hotspot, where you can get people to highlight things in images and heat maps and various things like that too. There's a lot of really interesting bits and pieces down here. Uh, and capture verification as well, if you want to keep bots out. Now, just up back up to text entry, uh, we can also choose how much space we give people to write in as well. We can let them fill in a whole essay if they want, but for this particular one, I just want it to be a single line. Now, at the moment, people can type anything that they want into this question. They could type the word 18 or 37 out in letters. And that's going to be a pain for me when it comes to analysis because I'm going to have to recode all of those into actual numbers. So I'm going to make my life easier and make it so that they have to enter a number, uh, an actual numeral, not type out a number. And I've said, please enter numerals only here. So they sort of know that that's coming. Remember, turn on false response. And now we're going to have a look at validation. So I'm going to use content validation here. And you'll see that it's gone a little bit funny here. There's a bin down here where if you've deleted questions, they'll end up. And there's some options here we're going to need. To reset that, just click the question above. And there we go. We're good. So this is a number question. So with number validation, I can also select what kind of range of responses I'll allow. So for this one, I'll say that the minimum age that someone can be is zero. I'm not expecting many one-year-olds to take part in, in a gambling survey, but that's how I'm going to set it. I'll say 100 is my maximum. And if anyone enters over 100, it'll say, sorry, you need to enter a number less uh, than 100. And for uh, decimals, I'll just say zero decimals because I don't really want people telling me that they're 37 and a half. It's not going to do much for my data analysis here. So I've got this one all set up ready to go. And note here that just because it's going to select a range from zero to 100 doesn't mean that I'm necessarily going to allow everyone to continue in the survey. In an upcoming video, I'll show you how to screen people out who are under 18, which is something that we often do in gambling surveys, for example. Now, the final question that I want to do here is um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander status. So uh, I, my variable name will be ATSI. And when I write these questions into my surveys, I usually try and just soften it a little bit by saying for statistical purposes. Um, I'm not sure if it actually softens it or not, uh, but ethics seems to like it. So let's go with it. So for statistical purposes, do you identify as Aboriginal and or Torres Strait Islander? And for this question, I'm going to allow people to select all that apply, not just one option if they don't want to. So my first option will be yes, Aboriginal. My second option will be yes, Torres Strait Islander. 
And some people identify as both of those things. So we'll actually go over here and instead of allowing just a single answer, we'll allow them to select multiple answers. And you'll see that our circle has very subtly gone to a square, which allows people to checkbox things rather than these radio buttons. So people could select both of these options. Now my last option here is going to be no, neither Aboriginal nor Torres Strait Islander. Now let's think about this question here because people can select multiple combinations of responses here. And at the moment, the way that it's set up, they could select yes, they're Aboriginal, but then also no, they're neither Aboriginal nor Torres Strait Islander. So if I click on this, a little blue button comes up and I can change this to be an exclusive answer. This is different to exclude from analysis. This is an exclusive answer. And this means that if they select this one, they can't also select the other ones. Now, for some reason, that's just dropped out my writing there. That doesn't happen very often, but it has in the demo, which is wonderful. <laughs> so I'll just type this back in again. All right, when I click out of that, I'll see that there's a little blue circle here with a cross through it, which indicates that this is an exclusive answer. If they select that, they won't be able to select anything else. So I'll make sure I click forced response here. So I've selected this as a forced response now, and I can also just preview this one question if I want to, and let's see how it works. So for statistical purposes, do you identify as Aboriginal and or Torres Strait Islander? I can select both of these options if I want to, and I can unselect them, just select one. But if I select this last option, it automatically unchecks the others. So let's do that again. Let's select both of the top ones, but then I select this last one and it will uncheck both of those because it's an exclusive answer. So in this video, I've showed you how to set up a few different questions. One, just like the consent one, for gender there, but with some additional things that we've done to it. For example, giving them an option to say, I prefer not to answer that question while still having it set up as forced response. I also showed you how to recode values within that question so that prefer not to say that I'm not giving you that answer question is coded quite differently from the others. And I recoded the others there too. That means when it comes to data analysis, I know that female is gonna be coded as zero and male is going to be coded as one. And that will actually be reflected in the data. In a future video, I'll show you how to download your data and what they look like. And you'll see that it carries both the number that we're using, the coding, and the label as well. For age, we set this up as a text box question instead. And we set some numeric validation there. So we set content validation to number. And we set some limits here. We're not going to accept answers outside of zero to 100. And we're not going to accept decimal places either. For Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander status, we allowed people to select more than one response option here if that was appropriate for them. And we also set this last one as an exclusive answer. Now, if you were doing your own survey, you might ask that question quite differently and we normally do, but I've done it this way as a demonstration of exclusive answers and multiple responses. In the next video, I'm gonna show you one more new question type, which is called a matrix table. And we'll also show you a block with a question in there that we only want certain people to answer. I'll see you in that video.